Hey, it's Morgan, Wild West Garage. Just want to thank you for watching. Um, still working on the Plymouth. Yeah, that's it underneath the bed sheets. Um, so today's video is going to be about uh, this uh, area of the car here, or a, or a piece that I made for it. Oh, there it is right there. Um, I'll talk about uh, the condition of this part and a few other things that I found on uh, the car, like right here. Um, and I'm also going to show you uh, how I made this piece. Oh, there it is. Oh, right there, you have this piece. Stay tuned. Just did a little poking at this. Just poking at it with the Marlin spike. And uh, couldn't find any metal down here. Let's see. See how deep that is? That is well over a quarter of an inch. So this is all all along here, see? Look at that bondo. Totally this whole thing is made out of bondo mint pretty much. It's <laughs> another quarter of an inch thick there before I hit metal. Wow. I thought I liked Bondo. That's unacceptable. So right here, it's all perforated. It's about a foot up from the trunk floor. Somebody has done a bit of a repair here before. There's a bit of Bondo on here. There's Bondo in here, I don't know if you can see that. Bondo in there. So they put just they just put Bondo over top of this, all these holes. And, uh, this isn't the right weather stripping for this trunk. And I, I don't know how long it's been on here, but see, I, I'm always talking about the moisture trap. This thing is a moisture trap. So you see how it fits on here. And then it just completely fills up this trough. So if any water gets in there, it's going to sit there. It's, it gets sealed in there. When the trunk lid's closed, this, this is pushed up against here. And it's pushed up against the lip. So any moisture that gets in there gets, gets sealed in there and does its, does its thing. And you can see what it's been doing. It's, uh, it's all crusty in here. And then ultimately this this rust here I'm sure was caused by or not necessarily caused by that but exacerbated if you want to call that one use a big word. Didn't didn't make it any better, that's for sure. Didn't help it. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. It's getting pretty high, I guess I can Pop a little hunk of metal in there. Just get going on uh, making a template for this curve here. Um, so I'll just a uh, piece of 1 8 plywood. Um, described it a couple times, making the second cut here. So you can just use tin snips, works really good. Cutting the stuff. Looks better if you have two hands, but anyways, there you get the idea. Here is my blank for this tail pan piece. I don't know if I actually want to call it a tail pan. It's not much of a pan, but this lower lip here. What would you call this? Not a pan, pan's bigger generally. So anyways, whatever you want to call it. So you uh, can see these lines are drawn on here and uh, that represents the, um, the bends for this, this uh, weather stripping lip here. So I'll make this bend here first and then I'll make that bend. I'm gonna attempt to do this with my bead roller. I'll just tip it on the bead roller. And then, uh, yeah, 
I, I, I started out thinking I would, I, would, I would start with a straight piece of metal and then just use a shrinker stretcher to make it do what I want. But then I thought, well, why not, why not start with a curved piece? Then I don't have to mess around with trying to stretch it to get the curve. Uh, but I will have to do some uh, shrinking to make this, this bend here happen. Because once I tip that up, the whole piece is going to bow down a lot. Actually, no, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to st stretch that. That's right. Yeah, I'll have to stretch. So, um, anyways, we'll see what happens here. We're going to make this bend first. Then I'll have a. And then I'll, yeah, then I'm not sure, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just not sure how this is going to work out. I can't, I can't make this, if I make this bend first, I won't be able to make this bend. So i got to make this bend first, and then I'll make that, even if I have to use a hammer and dolly to make this bend after, I have to make this bend first. So we'll get the bead roller set up, and that'll be next. Slow it down a bit, a lot. So this is 18 gauge, so it's be pretty hard to tip it. It is tipping it though. I think I should have a depth stop for this, make it a lot easier. I'll just keep going here, a little wiggly. You know, looking at this, I'm thinking I could form that first bend, and then because this is narrow enough, no, it wouldn't work because it would fold in on itself. No. Okay, I'll keep going.
should be able to bend it. I'm gonna have to do something about my transitions. This is the actual piece here, and then this is just kind of extra. But I might need to use a bit of that, so I gotta, I gotta smooth this transition out a bit. I just kind of faked it here a bit. It's a little kinky on that side. Anyways, I'll come back. I'll keep doing this. Come back when it's done. Just like to point out that I've got I've got way more material here than I than I actually need. I only need about I need an inch. I need, I need about two inches here. So this is over over two inches, obviously about three inches. But it makes it a lot easier to to have all this leverage when you're trying to push up and make this break here. kind of interesting it must this this metal must be a little softer right in this area as you can see it just seems like it wants to move easier here than it does on the, the beginning part here uh, I, I, I think I'm putting the same kind of pressure on it but it just this part this part here is just almost all the way to 90 so it's interesting Putting a lot of pressure on it as I roll it right now, and you can probably see this is kind of a wave here, swell, swelling here. You just watch it. You can maybe you can detect that. as far as I can go with this setup starting to hit the end of the shaft here I think I'll be able to run it through one more time so we get to the softer spot it's like eighth of an inch away from the end of the shaft Pretty much touching the shaft now, so this part is as far as I will go. I could put a yeah, maybe I'll try putting a spacer on this die because the shaft's sticking out a little bit. There it is after about six passes. Um, so now you can see the, the bow that's gone into this piece. Um, I don't want it bowed. I want it bowed in uh, this direction, but I want it flat in this plane. So this the wide plane here needs to be flat, but it's got quite a bow to it. But anyways, so I'm gonna, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, do any uh, stretching on this. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to fold this over now. So what I'm going to do I'll I'll move the this edge of the, the this top die out to the step here and then I'll ro roll it and it'll, it'll make a, a bit of a uh, well it'll make a step in this piece to give me a line to uh, to fold on and then once I got that folded over I'm gonna run it I'm gonna run it all through the slip roller because that that fold over bit will fit in here and hopefully I can flatten it out so you can really see how much of a, a bow there is in that piece that should be flat in this in this plane flat this way so I did, I did have, I got this set up to do a, a step and I did get a bit of a step in here. So now I'm going to put the skateboard wheel on and hopefully that'll tip that top flange up a bit. So after being uh, 
run through with the skateboard wheel a few, you know, twice actually. You can see that that's well on its way to being folded over. I'm gonna put some more pressure on the, crank that down a bit more and um, run it through another time and see if I get, get any more out of it. The limiting factor here is that it'll, well, it's, this is at least half an inch and that's what I got there, so. But it's not gonna fold right up against that, but you know, it's gonna end up hitting this. So anyways, actually, I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna do. I think, I don't think it'll hit that before it bends too much. But anyways, uh, I'll run it a couple more times here. I've reached the limit of my machine. I got the shaft cranked down so far here that because this is the pivot point, it tipped the gear right out of there, out of mesh. So this this whole shaft just kept walking off. So everything, and then I I don't have this bolted on either. So it just all walked off the end of the skateboard wheel. It would have worked if the gears had stayed meshed, and this was you know clamped down to the shaft. But anyways, I knew that was going to be a problem with the gears. I have to lower this slot so that when I crank it down a bunch, it, it uh, doesn't come out of mesh. So here's where I am right at with this right now. So I'm gonna have to make this, complete this fold here with a hammer and dolly. So I need to find a piece of uh, flat bar that's a half an inch thick. I'm gonna stick it in here and dolly it over onto that. And then I just realized <clears throat> That once I get uh, that done, that folded over, I was talking about straightening this piece out with the uh, slip roller, but that's not going to work because this is the direction the slip roller forms stuff. It's already it's already bowed in the direction that it would that it would form it at. So because the uh, the grooves in the top roller, all, all I can do is bow it more. <clears throat> if the grooves were in the bottom rollers, then I could straighten it out because I could put that into this piece into the groove in the rollers, and then I could straighten it out. But that's not the case, so I've got to come up with another plan for that. Here's my setup for completing this fold. So got this uh, big hunk of iron here, backing up this. Uh, Little, little chunk of half inch solid bar. So I just keep moving along. Sandwich it in here. Clamp it down onto my trusty I beam section. And just tap it down on it. So it's going to take a while, but it's working. You can see, see how it's, you know, it's making that, it's making that 90 degree bend. So I'll just have to get it more or less folded over and then clean it up a bit. <clears throat> okay, that worked really well to get that folded over, as you can see. Uh, so now I got to deal with this, this bow. But I get this flattened out somehow. Uh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. But anyways, I'll figure something out. And I'll show you when I figure it out. It's the foot max. This is my method for straightening this. Appears to be working. All right, Foot Max did its job there. Max 
Um, yeah, that's you can see all the footprints to prove it. Uh, so that, that flattened it out nicely. So now I have to put a band in it this way. This thing just doesn't want to, the opposite direction. So now I got to bend it an inch, an inch out from here and bend it down this way. So when I do that, it's going to want to bow it again in the same direction. Yeah, yeah. So I'll have to uh, counteract that. I could, I needed to expand it to counteract it on this side. So bending it in this direction, I'll need to shrink it, and I can do that quite easily. So back to the skateboard wheel and this dirty. If you even want to call it a die, I just quickly built this years ago when I first finished the machine. So I've started, I started the third bend with that. See it more on this end here. See it's just starting to take a bit of a turn there. So um, got a line drawn on there. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do the rest of it. Um, they have the right setup. I have to make some something. Here's the setup. Seems to be working. See what's going on there. So you can see how the uh, the J is going down into the step on the die here, and that's supporting it along this edge. And the the um, the dies like the 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 outer surface of these dies is barely overlapping. There's about probably an eighth of an inch of overlap there, but because it's being supported down here, it's working. I'm able to put quite a bit of pressure on that up, and this is this is breaking. So every time I take my hand off, I take my foot off the pedal so it stops. And then reposition my hand. It's coming. Probably would have been a lot easier with 20 gauge. I know it would have been easier with 20 gauge. Lifting the whole machine off the ground here. Of course, it's bowing the whole thing in the wrong direction again, but I'll fix that. I can shrink this now after I get it to 90 or so. I think it might stop before I get it to 90. I'll always use the foot max again. So yesterday, it got up to 42 degrees in the valley here. Um, so it's supposed to get up. So that's like 107 Fahrenheit. Today it's going to be around 90 or 100. Between 90 and 100 for high. It got so hot that it buckled the gutter on my house. There's uh, five hangers that didn't have screws in them, so buckled, buckled in, that, uh, in that area. It's pretty amazing. Managed to 
When I screwed it back down, it kind of straightened out. There's a, there's a big buckle on the back side of it. The gutter is probably about 50 feet long, so one continuous piece. So I had to go somewhere, I guess. It's too bad. Anyways, nature can shape metal too. A lot easier than I can. Sometimes it's not too pretty though. Yeah, I'm going to run this one more time. Okay, here's where I'm stopping with this process. See, you can see it really kind of squished the, the channel down quite a bit. It's not quite... It's not 90 yet. It's about 45. I'm just going to do the rest of it with a hammer and dolly. I'll just clamp it to my I-beam and fold it over. So I cut a bunch of this off. Now it's down to an inch, about an inch and a half. There's the chunk down there. I think that's about an inch and a quarter. So it's it's close to where it needs to be now. I wanted to leave a little bit because I'm hoping I can fold this over once I get it roughly to where the shape I want it. So now I'm going to shrink this. I'm going to shrink this edge to get that that, uh, that bow out of it again. I, the foot, the foot max isn't going to work this time. All right, after much, quite a bit of shrinking on this piece here, and just hammer and dolly and squeezing this, um, squeezing this channel, this piece of uh, half inch bar inside this channel with the vise, just going along back and forth on this vise just to tidy up the. This, this this J channel here, and then also uh, I had it clamped in here and I tapped it down to tighten up this bend here a little bit. Um, ended up having to uh, move this bend, this bend right here, the the bend, the last bend I made. I had to move it out a little bit. So what I did was. Uh, I just put it against the um, uh, the I beam here, and then struck it down into here with a, I got a cross beam hammer. I don't know where it is right now, but um, just st st struck it along this edge and just kept moving it along. Didn't have that piece of metal inside there. Just I just let the J channel, the flange right along this right here so that's I tried to keep the when the hammer blows right where this rib is on the eye beam so it didn't you know walk around and so it wouldn't go so the channel wouldn't go over this this is a little bit wider than half inch so I didn't want it to start forming over that so anyways uh, yeah so I mean, it's just you know hammer dolly work um, I'm uh, putting the uh, also um, it ended up being too curved this way. It was uh, wasn't fitting the trunk lid, so I I put this piece of uh, square stock in here and just you can see this, so it's because because it's curved and this is straight, so I was hitting it here. I had it on the uh, I had the glove there and ended up I was just hitting. Hitting it, moving it, moving it along, hitting it, just you know, just quite quite hard actually, just to get it to kind of straighten out a bit. So it's a lot of playing around, but you know, to, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do metal shaping. So I think this is pretty awesome actually. You know, I know. Can you hear that? I love that sound. Just makes me happy even sounds better on aluminum 
to the sound of aluminum and the handle, aluminum parts. So anyways, uh, you can see it's fitting the, uh, of course I gotta cut all that off, but it's fitting the curve nicely. So uh, going good. So now I gotta, uh, so now what I was gonna do here was, uh, I'm gonna put this back, this here. I'm just going to use the vise to hold it. And so this, this face here is pretty much bang on an inch wide. I'm going to make it an inch wide. So I'm just going to put some uh, one inch wide tape along there. That'll give me a good reference point. And then I'm going to curve this, this in. And then I just have to make a little L-shaped piece for the bottom here. And then I can join it up to this guy. So all the welding will be out of sight. So I got the tape on there and then I uh, run it through the bead roller right along the edge of that tape just to get a, you know, just a, it's stepped it a bit. So, it, you know, there's two bends there, but one of them is going to disappear. Uh, just as it, it, it's just a kind of a hard line, so when I slide it into the shrinker now, it'll go up against that that line there. And uh, as I shrink it, I'll, I'm just going to, you know, bend it down a little bit, and it'll start to because it needs to shrink to go back over. So without, you know, otherwise it's going to distort this edge. So I'll just shrink it. And, pull it down a little bit as I go and uh, hopefully it'll start to turn. Hello bird. So this uh, piece here, this is uh, is tapering. Like it's, it's wider on this end and you know it's narrow on this end. So I found this, well, I didn't find this hammer because I found it. I found that this hammer fits in there nicely on the side that's the wide side. So I'm just going to um, hammer the hammer this down on top of this to get this, this a uniform shape. See how it doesn't, doesn't fit at all. Doesn't fit at all here. But it fits, it fits down here. So once I Hammer that down over it across here and expand that out. Hopefully, it'll fix it up for me. So, this has been quite a challenge to make this piece. Um, yeah, I don't know if. Uh, I could have done it differently. Or I could have done it in several pieces, like I talked about. Um, originally, I thought I was going to do it in three pieces. Now it's going to end up being two pieces, um, which I think is kind of cool. I mean, I, I started out thinking one thing, and it just evolved into this. Um, that's kind of the fun thing about metal shaping. And it's kind of it's kind of the fun thing about doing anything creative, I guess. Um, you know, I would imagine the people that paint have the same experience. They start out thinking something's going to happen, and as they get to work on it, it evolves into something slightly different. But anyways, um, this isn't you know perfect in any way. Really, there's a lot of defects in it, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna do the job. It's gonna fit the bill. Um, I'm gonna take a rusty Bondo filled part, and make it into a, a solid. You know, this will be a solid addition to this car. Um, still got to work on the ends a little bit to 
But I think once I start fitting it to the car, um, you know, and then I gotta build these end bits here. It'll, uh, it'll take shape. So anyways, uh, uh, I guess a couple of things I did. Um, I, uh, I made this little block. Uh, fits in here. And of course the hammer head that fit in there. That was, that was a great aid to me in making this thing consistent shape. So this having this block allowed me to um, um, put this half inch piece in, in, in here like that and then I could squeeze that in the vise and that kind of helped get things uniform as well. So that's just a lot of work. I've been working on this thing. I worked on it mostly yesterday. Um, I don't know if you notice I cut these, cut these tails off. It's just extra material. I thought I could just bend those up into the corner, but it just ended up not working out. So I'll just form those separately. So it's looking good. I think I'm going to end the video here and uh, I'll get back to you when I start putting it on the car.